the sky this month with your host, Dave McDonald. Welcome to the sky this month. I'm your host, Dave McDonald, and this is April 2023, just one year away from the great eclipse that it will be happening in our home state of New Hampshire. Of course, many of you are in other states as you watch the show, and uh, you can check out the line of totalities and see where it might come through your state or where you might want to travel to. So this is a great month. We've got some awesome things happening with the planet Mercury. Mercury is going to be approaching a point we call greatest eastern elongation. I'll show you an image of where you can expect to find Mercury at its finest, but it is available all month for viewing. Venus is shining so brilliantly at a negative 4, and it will increase to a negative 4.1 magnitude uh, during the month of April. And then Mars is hanging out nice and uh, bright and red, and, but it's getting further away and dimming as the month goes on. And then we have a great meteor shower to talk about. The Lyrid meteor shower happens late night, April 22nd to early morning, April 23rd. And we'll show you where to be looking for that. So many things. But the major thing we're going to talk about uh, in our show is about the great New Hampshire eclipse that's coming up. And we have a preview coming up at the McAuliffe Shepherd Discovery Center. And the McAuliffe Shepherd Discovery Center is in Concord, New Hampshire. And as you can see by the slide on your screen, that we're having a special show at 1 o'clock. We're going to be talking about eclipses crossing in New Hampshire. At 2 o'clock, we're having a special tonight sky show, which will feature showing you just what the eclipse is going to be looking like up in Coas County. And that's just going to thrill your socks off. And then at 3 o'clock, we're having the eclipses crossing in New Hampshire again with a solar, New Hampshire solar system and bass, not solar system, solar eclipse ambassador coming to be with us. And uh, we're hoping there might possibly be an appearance by our governor. And then we will be having a foreshadowing of the eclipse in terms of its positioning. Well, um, I... We're going to be talking about these two eclipses that are crossing <coughs> America, coming soon to a sky near you. And I want to introduce to you uh, Rick Eames, who's the New Hampshire Solar Eclipse Task Force uh, founder and uh, chief... Visionary officer. <laughs> the chief visionary <laughs> officer. Welcome, Rick. So Thank much, you, thanks Dave. Thanks so much for coming to the show. And I, of course, am Dave McDonald. Uh, host of the show, but also the New Hampshire Solar Eclipse Task Force co-founder and chief science officer. So that's uh, a little bit about me. So as we're looking at this uh, slide here, uh, down uh, below, we've got some interesting things coming up. But first, let's just talk about what eclipses are like. Dad, can you explain to me what a solar eclipse is? No, son. Chuckles, chuckles, I can hear them coming from <laughs> all over the place. Well, what is an eclipse anyway? Well, it's a celestial event where one celestial object casts its shadow on another. And so you can see here in the middle is Earth. Now, Moon is in two different places, but the Sun is off to the right of your screen. And if you look at towards the left, you can see that the entire moon is in the shadow of Earth when the light from the sun hits Earth and then places the moon in the full moon position in a shadow. So anywhere on Earth, uh, you're going to be able to see that during the full moon. But during a solar eclipse, again, the sun is off to the right of your screen and the moon is in its new moon phase. And so the light from the sun hits the moon and casts a very narrow shadow in the realm of 160 to 170 miles wide or so, and only about one 
tenth of one percent of Earth's population are going to get to see it. So we don't have a solar eclipse every full moon or every new moon because Earth is orbiting the sun, moon is orbiting Earth, and the orbit of the moon in relationship to Earth is inclined, as you can see, uh, by about uh, five degrees. So there are three types of solar eclipses. We have the total solar eclipse, where the entire sun is blocked, and you get to see the amazing corona. An annular eclipse, which is where the moon is further away, thus creating a smaller disk to be in front of the sun, so the entire sun is not blocked. And then we have a partial eclipse where the lineup is not exact, and part of the sun is uh, blocked out. So totally, get it, totally different images here from a total eclipse, an annual eclipse, and a partial uh, eclipse. So interestingly enough, one of the reasons that this phenomenon happens is because the sun is about 400 times larger than the moon, but it's about 400 times further away. So those two matters of mathematics in the realm of the 400s uh, allow us to enjoy the eclipses. Well, um, I introduced you uh, Rick Eames, and so Rick is here. And uh, Rick, can you, I see you, I can see where you are there in the picture, and you were at the 2017 eclipse in Casper, Wyoming. So uh, what was that experience like for you? It was pretty awesome, Dave. I was out in Casper, Wyoming in August of 2017 with about 20 other uh, eclipse chasers, a um, couple from New Hampshire, a couple from the West Coast. And uh, some of us had seen eclipses before, some of us built telescopes, but we were all there for this, for us, not quite once in a lifetime event, but still a pretty awesome sight. And uh, we had clear skies, we had a great day, we were about 400 feet above, <clears throat> above the valley floor where Casper is located, so we were up high. Um, and the eclipse occurred between about 10 a.m. and 1 p.m. and uh, it was everything that we thought it would be. Awesome. And I went with my family, uh, my daughter and wife, to Kentucky in Hopkinsville in 2017 to see the uh, total solar eclipse from that vantage point. And this is a photo f through the telescope. You can actually see a, a few sunspots there as the moon is getting ready, well, it is in the process of covering the sun. And then we have the diamond ring effect. These photos were taken by myself and my daughter. And then we have the amazing uh, full total solar eclipse where you can see uh, the corona. Just an amazing view. You don't want to miss it. You need to start planning. And then the moon, obviously, is making its way as it starts to uncover the sun. Rick, as I look at this uh, list of things down the bottom, I'm seeing there's an eclipse mobile on display. There's a time capsule announcement. And uh, pizza is included. What, what are some of these details about? So I was uh, <clears throat> very lucky. Uh, time capsule is going to go into the ground, the solar eclipse time capsule go into the ground on May 1st, 2024, just about a month after the total solar eclipse here in New Hampshire. And that'll give us time to gather eclipse glasses, newspaper articles, um, all various paraphernalia and writings about the eclipse. And then 55 years later to the day on May 1st, 2079, It'll come out of the ground, and that is the date of the next total solar eclipse to come through New Hampshire. And I so, can't wait. I'm looking forward to uh, seeing what comes out of the ground. I am too, but uh, my, you my might odds be of in the ground are poor. <laughs> yes, that is correct. However, my kids will be in their 80s. They, they have, uh, I've already committed them to be there. And any kids, that, uh, 10, 15, 20-year-old kids, that experience this eclipse next year, 
they will have the best shot of being around 55 years later when possibly some of their drawings or articles come out of the ground. Very nice. exciting. And this is a photo of the Eclipse Mobile, which will be at the McCall Shepherd Discovery Center on that day. So a nice looking car, Rick. Thank you, Dave. Um, as you can see from the sign, it's a 2018 Dodge Challenger, which is a pretty cool car in and of itself. But the thing that makes it unique is it has a full, uh, full body wrap of a total solar eclipse. And you can see the various, it's a composite wrap, vinyl wrap, on the hood shows the diamond ring, the chromosphere, Bailey's beads, the corona goes over the roof, down the sides, and on the trunk panel shows what the sky will look like above New Hampshire, uh, north of Lancaster during totality, and that car will be at our pre-launch event. So Beautiful. please come on down and see it. And Governor Sununu uh, did in fact sign the bill for the first in the nation solar eclipse day. He signed it August 11, 2021, and uh, Rick and I were both there to witness the signing of this bill. So it's an official thing, this upcoming uh, April 8, 2024. And again, Saturday coming up uh, this year, 2023, we are having our in the, the pre-anniversary. And so, Let's talk a little bit about where this is happening. So you can see here the sun, moon, and you. And where will you be? Hopefully you'll be somewhere in the northern part of that circle to the right of your screen. Uh, because that's where the total solar eclipse is going through. And you can see uh, the northern part, Kowas County of New Hampshire, is going through. And uh, so that is where you want to be up in Kowas County and there is a place, as you can see uh, here, where the annular solar eclipse crosses where the total solar eclipse is going through. And that's happening on October 14th this year, 2023. And my pre-calculus students back in uh, 2019, in the spring of 2019, calculated that spot, got the latitude and the longitude and it's in the woods, about 211 feet westish from a class six road. Uh, and so it's private property, I guess. But perhaps somebody might be able to take a picture of themselves there, uh, which would be fun. So uh, again, the eclipse is coming. And here you can see another close up of the White Mountain National Forest. And you need to be north of there between the blue lines represents where you will be able to experience totality. But that red line in the middle is the center line of totality. So the further you are away from the red line, the less uh, number of minutes and seconds you're going to have for totality. But uh, basically, it's going to be in the vicinity of right around uh, 3.30 in the afternoon. So don't miss that. And you see here that the moon is coming from left to right as it covers the sun. You have the Bailey's beads, the diamond ring effect, the corona that you see, and then slowly the moon recedes. You don't want to miss this uh, outstanding and amazing uh, event. So uh, quickly, Rick, I like this sign that we found, you found, up in the Crawford Notch here, the center of the eclipse, because we had an eclipse years ago here in New Hampshire, but it makes this point, make your reservations early. What is that all about? Yes, that comes from the Notchland Inn that is in their lobby, and uh, that they experienced the center line, or close to it, of the eclipse in 1932, almost 100 years ago. And just like back then, as is true today, make your reservations, make your plans early, because uh, 2079 is a long ways off, so you don't want to miss 2024. All right. Well, uh, thanks, Rick. I appreciate your being a part of our show today and for your contributions to, to everything concerning this eclipse, because I know you've been working very hard for very many years and it's uh, clearly a passion of yours. Yeah. 
It is. A and, lot of fun. And it will be neat to see you uh, in person at the McAuliffe Shepherd Discovery Center. That's in Concord, New Hampshire on April 8, 2023. Now, the show, obviously, if you're catching this before April 8, then hopefully you can make it. But if you're not watching the show until after uh, April 8, we're going to get it recorded. Uh, Concord Cable TV, is Concord Community TV is going to be there. And so we'll have some snippets to show you on our next show uh, in May. But at this point, we want to get right to the night sky and some of the planets and constellations and the meteor shower that you'll be able to see this month. Hope you enjoyed that little interview with Rick. Now we want to show you a video, uh, NPR, thank you very much, of some eclipse watchers that saw the 2017 eclipse. And I just find it amazing, even though I saw it myself in person, how these people are enjoying it. Hope you enjoy this video clip as well. That's an impressive sight. There it comes. Look at the street lights coming up. A little bit. Wow. Stop it. You wow. see them? The street lights are coming up. Look, I can just see it. It's, it's going, it's going, it's going, it's going. It's there. It's almost. It's almost there. Oh, Like love. I heard little crickets like, come out chirping and all that because it got dark and it, I don't know and I felt the temperature drop. Celestial things are just beyond comprehension and when you see one and it's Everybody's really there and we're all here. No matter who you were, different. what your beliefs were, Wave what your morals just were. Joy so and sort just of let you see where we sit in the, in the cosmos. You know, because we all are experiencing life the same way. So Oh, what color, what political, anything, everybody's like... I think it's oh, something man. we all really need right now, is just to feel connected and, oh no, in a way. There was such a camaraderie and friendliness, and, and we were literally touching and hugging each other. I bet the whole world was looking up. <laughs> I bet the whole world was looking up. Well, now we're going to have a look at the night sky. Wasn't that amazing, the, all the expressions and the comments about the eclipse that you just saw? It's just really phenomenal. And I hope that you get to enjoy it and make your plans to get up to Coas County next April 8, 2024. Well, right now we're looking at April 6. This is 2023. And you can see right here, Mercury. Mercury is at a position we call greatest eastern elongation, when it is as far away from the sun as it's going to get, which is about 19 degrees. And on April 6th, Mercury is blazing at a negative 1.1 magnitude, which is really bright, but it is still in the glare of the sun to some degree. You're never gonna find Mercury in a totally dark sky. And two weeks later, around the 21st, it's going to dim by about 10 times down to uh, just about a magnitude 2. So great opportunities all month to be able to find Mercury, but your best chances are around 
uh, April 6th or the week thereafter. So, and then of course you see uh, Venus, and you can't miss Venus, brilliant, shining, dazzling Venus uh, in the night sky. And you're gonna be getting your last views uh, of Orion. You can see Orion's belt here, on the Tak, on the Laman Mintaka. And this is Rigel down here. So your last views of Orion are happening as well as Taurus. This is the bright star Aldebaran. So now if we look into the next slide, we're gonna skip ahead to April 10th. And April 10th, interestingly enough, and this is just about 8.30, it's about 8.25 on April 10th. And right here, you can see Mercury shining through that particular tree. Now, I don't know if you have that tree in your yard or not, but it indicates that Mercury is visible for quite a while, uh, an hour or so, depending upon your horizon, after the sun sets. So don't give up on uh, trying to find uh, Mercury because it's still visible here at 825. And then I wanted to point out Venus's travel through Taurus the bull. So right here are what we know as the Pleiades or the Seven Sisters. And Venus is, is kind of exaggerated here. It's kind of looking li almost like a moon, but it's a, just a very, very bright negative 4.1 magnitude uh, by the end of the month. But this is April 10th, and you can see this is Aldebaran. This is the face of the bull, right? You can see this V shape. That V shape is the face of the bull. Also is the area where you find the Hyades. It's a star cluster. And then you have here the Pleiades, the seven sisters. And so as time goes on for the next week, Venus is going to be making its way up through the Hyades and the Pleiades. So it's going to be uh, a good number of days for some really great photography that you're going to be able to do, keeping track of Venus as it moves uh, along. And uh, once again, you can see as I step off screen here that you have Orion, Betelgeuse, and uh, Rigel, and Mars, red Mars is up above, almost if you took a line from uh, safe up through Betelgeuse, you're going to find Mars shining nice and red uh, up above Orion. Now, next slide, we're going to jump ahead to April 22nd. And one of the things about April 22nd is the moon joins in the show. So you can see Venus has significantly gone through both uh, the Hyades and the Pleiades, which is here. Venus has been on the move, but on the 22nd, the moon joins in. Now, it looks like a full moon here, but it's actually a crescent moon approaching first quarter. So a very, very nice, again, another beautiful opportunity. And again, this is in the realm of 8.30 on April 22nd. Okay, so this is all looking west, of course. So now let's change our viewpoint because there's a reason I'm staying with April 22nd because in a moment we're going to talk about the meteor shower but let's go to the next slide and we're going to take a look at the sky uh, towards the east. So we're facing east now and one of the things that uh, I want you to be able to look at is if you can notice here uh, we have the handle of the Big Dipper coming in up, up here. So this is the last stars of the handle of the Big Dipper, which are arching down here to the star we know as Arcturus. And then the saying goes, you arc to Arcturus, which is here, and then you spike down to Spica, which is at the bottom of your screen, which is in the constellation of Virgo. So I thought it might be helpful to add some lines here. So if we bring up the next slide with the lines on it, uh, again, you are going to be able to see that here is the, this is again, the end of the handle of the Big Dipper, okay? So the last two stars, this is uh, Mizar and Alcor, and it curves towards Arcturus. Arcturus is at the bottom of what I like to call the ice cream cone. You can see going up towards the left side of your screen, you can see what I think looks like an ice cream cone here. And the, at the base is Arcturus. That's the constellation of Buotes, 
uh, B-O-O -O with the double dots over the O, uh, Buotes is that constellation. And then off to uh, the left, as you look at your screen, this is the northern crown, Corona Borealis. And it kind of looks more like a tiara, but that is the northern crown, Corona Borealis. And then at the top of your screen is the bringing in of spring, the constellation of Leo the lion. And up here you can see the sickle of Leo, the backwards question mark. This is Regulus, the heart of the lion. And then back here is uh, the hind haunches and the star de nobla, which represents the tail of the lion. So that's a little bit about some spring stars and some spring constellations as we move into April. And then lastly, this next slide, I'll just mention a little bit about the Lyrid meteor shower. So again, we're facing east. You can see uh, over here is southeast. And then to the other side, the left side of your screen would be northeast. And this is uh, east that we're facing. This is a little bit after midnight. This is about 15 minutes or so after midnight. The best time to see the Lyrid meteor shower is late night, April 22nd, to early morning before the sun rises of April 23rd. Now, if it happens to be cloudy that night, that morning, uh, you know, a day or two ahead, a day or two after should be just fine, but this is the predicted peak of the meteor shower where you may see as many as 18 meteors is the prediction uh, per hour. But the further after midnight that you get, the higher the chances. And also that moon will have set. So we're facing uh, east. And the reason it's called the Lyrids is this is the constellation of Lyra, the lyre. And it kind of looks like, a, to me, a diamond with the star Vega, the bright star Vega on top. Vega rules the summer sky, so it's kind of neat that the summer star is coming into view uh, in April, but again, we're after midnight. And then th the, where it the, says Lyrids here, that is what we call the radiant of the meteor shower. Now, the meteors can appear to radiate from that spot, so if you see a meteor that night, trace it backwards and see if it ends up in this area not too far from Vega. If it seems to be going in a strange direction, then what's what we call a sporadic meteor. But <clears throat> you can look all over the entire sky and you'll see meteors shooting around. You don't have to have the radiant in view, but if the radiant is above the horizon, that makes your chances uh, a little higher. So the Lyrid meteor shower, late night, April 22nd, better time after midnight on the early morning of April 23rd, and you get to enjoy the Lyrid meteor shower. Don't go out and stand up and look in your driveway. Get a chair, sleeping bag, blankets, some hot chocolate, some donuts, and enjoy yourself for an hour or two uh, looking up at the dark sky. It's much more comfortable if you're reclined, even in like a lawn chair. It's time to get the lawn chairs out anyway. So that's our show for April. Hope to see you at the McCall Shepherd Discovery Center on, in Concord, New Hampshire on Saturday, April 8, 2023 for our pre-anniversary. And don't forget to get out and enjoy the planets and the stars and the constellations. It's the greatest show on earth and you can see it from your backyard. I'm your host, Dave McDonald for the sky this month.